Hello, good evening. My name is Kain Tandogenius, and today we are going to solve yet another hypothesis testing problem. Okay, so um, remember to subscribe to my channel. Click on the subscribe button below if you have not done so, so that you can subscribe and encourage me to make more lessons for you and for others. Also, like this video, or to share it with your friends, or even leave a comment for me if you have some questions or you have some problems you would like me to solve. So let's go to start immediately. The best way to handle statistics is to solve problems. So the question says, in a packaging plant, a machine packs cartons with jars. It is supposed that a new machine will pack faster on the average than the machine currently used. To test the hypothesis, the time it takes for each machine to pack 10 cartons are recorded and the result in seconds are as follows. Okay, so this is the result in seconds, all right? So the question continues, do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that on the average, uh, that is mistake, the new machine parks faster, perform the required hypothesis test at 5% level of significance. Now the first thing to do is to understand the problem. The first thing you see is that there are two samples that have been given. Secondly, you need to compare these two samples. Third, there is no variance given. If there is no variance given, then most likely you are using a t-test. Are these two samples dependent on each other? No, they are not dependent. The two machines were used separately. So the test has to be independent samples t-test, right? Or two independent samples t-test. So let's follow the procedure and solve it. The step one is to set up the null and alternate hypothesis. How do you do this? It's from the question. The question says, the question says, it is supposed that the new machine packs faster. That is the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis means the current belief, the current theory. So it is believed for now that the new machine is better, meaning that the new machine and the old machine, there is a difference in the means because the new machine is believed to be better. So that means H0 or the null hypothesis says that mu1 is not equal to mu2. That is how to state your null hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis is exactly opposite of the null hypothesis and it simply says mu1 is equal to mu2, right? So we've completed our step one. Meanwhile, the Excel sheet for this problem is downloadable from here. You can download it for free, but I'll advise try to follow this tutorial first to the end and try to solve this problem on your own before you look at the solution. So let's move to step two. Create the table like the one below and use it to calculate the means of the two groups. You can also calculate it by hand. So now you need to set up a table like this. So the first thing you do is to copy the data and paste it on a cell sheet, right? When I copied it, I was having some problems, so I have to type it out uh, manually. Uh, somehow uh, I have not solved that problem, but for now maybe you just have to type out this problem uh, manually. What I normally do is to open an Excel sheet side by side and just type it manually into the Excel sheet. So we need to add two columns. If you are performing independent samples t-test, you need to have two additional columns after each of the sample, right? You need to have two additional columns after each of the samples, and those two columns has to be d and d squared, right? We are going to talk about it later. This is d. d stands for difference or deviation from the mean d and d squared, so this is d and d squared, that caret symbol 
like a small triangle, uh, a, like a small letter of uh, V, inverted, stand for uh, for square. So let me just uh, format this so that it looks a little presentable. So normally I do something like this, and then I add the border around it, and then I add a border around something like an underscore here. So this is what I normally do, and select the heading and then go ahead to shade so this is what i normally do each time i'm solving a problem that is uh, independent samples t test so now to calculate the mean i normally calculate the sum and also the mean sorry the sum and the mean all right so the sum you calculate using the auto sum symbol here you use auto sum just oh it's taking the first one so auto sum of b3 to b12 so you can say auto sum and then just go ahead to select everything and press enter okay so that is how you calculate the sum um, i'd like to make it a little bold okay so i'm going to copy it but before I do that, I'm going to calculate the mean. The mean, you say, equal to average, open bracket, and then select everything and press enter. So this is the average, okay? So I'm going to just copy this tool and use it to calculate the second one. So copy if you don't want to copy you can just follow the same procedure using sum and average but if not just paste it there and it calculates for uh, this uh, set of values here so at this point we've completed step two we've calculated the mean and we've calculated uh, the sum for the two sets of data let's see yeah let's let's see I think we are okay why is this one not giving us the right answer b3 to b12 i think something is not right All right, so I think everything is okay. Everything is okay, so, but if we look at this, this is 421 and this is 42.14, something is not right. B3 to B12, uh -huh. okay. So Okay, but this one says 432 and 43. Let's verify. 432, 43. Okay, is fine. But this one says 379. Something is actually missing from there. Something is missing. It's not calculating one of them. I'm suspecting this. Okay, that that should be this. I think there should be some space. Some way. So, all right. So I think this is where we are. So remove all the spaces attached to the number. So at this point, we've completed step two. So watch how to easily create this. Okay, no. So we now move to step three. So we're continuing that in the part two of this video.